about me. You promised me, Nesbitt. of terror, crimes against the public. To combat it, I've got special men, experts from the army, the police, from every service. These are the professionals. another hangover. Mr. Miller always starts his day with black coffee. I've noticed. Better take him two cups. There's a board meeting today. We could start without him. Hardly. The main item on our agenda is our biological division. And without Miller, there's really no point. It really is too much. Ah, Mr. Miller, perhaps now we can begin. It's very big. Ted! Hold on a moment. 
World chemical products. Man just fell out of a seven-story window. That's police business. He jumped. That's his business. Somebody had slipped him a drug, him and half the staff there. Well, well that's, that's um, drug squad drug business. Drug squad business. What are you two, some kind of music hall act? Whatever we are, you made us. Ta-da! Anyway, why us, sir? Because the dead man had a Class XA security rating. And that puts him right under our umbrella. So get over there, fast! There's no way of stopping him. It all happened so quickly. Yes. Mr. Harvey. There. Morning. Good morning. CI-5. I'm Doyle. That's Bodie. Tell us, please. Tell you? Tell you what? Well, about the dead man for a start. Well, his name was Miller. Ted Miller. He was the head of our biological division. He was on special government work with high, high security, security classification. Yeah, we know. What exactly happened? He just walked into the room and jumped out of the window. Poor Hoskins. It's obviously one of the hallucinogenics, LSD or ADX or something of that sort. Do you manufacture that kind of stuff here? A uh, nail. No. So who brought it in? Administered it? I mean, you appear to be okay. What did they drink? Or eat? Or breathe. But you didn't. Perhaps they didn't have coffee. Meaning? It could be as simple as that. Mr. Miller always starts the day with coffee. Where did you get his coffee from, sweetheart? Did you make it? Get the water from a tap? No. No, there are coffee machines on nearly every floor. Better get them analysed. Better close them down. Seal them off, quick. Wait a minute. We can do that here. We are a chemical company. We have a laboratory here, and Cummins is an analytical chemist. Well, Mr. Cummings. Oh, it's been laced, all right. That one machine. ADX. ADX. Hello, Susan. You bastards! Your keys. Thank you. Stronger than LSD, isn't it? Ten times stronger. And administered through this. Be easy to bust that lock. Yeah, it would. Only uh, hasn't been busted, has it? Well, the filter's been removed and this water's been laced. Who's got the keys? Susan Fenton, caging manageress. She left in a hurry. So why... Alverstone Avenue. Just testing. Hello? 
Sutton. Listen, Susan Fenton needs a fix. She needs it now, at home. And Sutton, a big fix. I'm cut. You know what you're saying? Yes. <sighs> now you've got the wrong man, Nesbitt. No, Sutton. I've got the right man. You need a product. I supply it. You wouldn't want your supply to be cut off. No. Good. Just get on with it, then. Who said there was no Santa Claus? Right credit card opens so many doors. You should put a deadlock, you know, it's much safer. No, don't get up. Oh, that's Miss Susan Fenton, isn't it? Hello, I'm Bodie. That's Doyle. Hello. We missed you at World Chemicals. Oh, she was upset. Distraught, weren't you? It was the coffee, you know. The coffee machine. Did you hold the keys for? I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> we didn't say it did, did we? Us? No. No. What we did wonder, though, was uh, whether anybody else had access to those keys. Uh, well, uh, I... They hang in my office. No. Uh, sorry to take issue on that, but... Uh, yeah, we, we've been assured that you always keep them on you. Yeah. Ah! It would appear our information is correct. I'm tired. I'm really tired. I'm you. You are tired, aren't you? How long have you been shooting up, Susan? Hmm? Long enough to have almost run out of veins. We better take her in. Oh, please. She's out of her mind. We struck gold, Bodie. Girl with a bad habit and the keys to the coffee machine. Yeah, a bad habit like that, it'll do anything. Anything. Yeah, well, we wait till she wakes up. Hold back on a fix. She'll spew her gut. If she wakes up, this stuff is pure, 100% uncut. Get an ambulance, quick. Is she gonna make it? It's difficult to say, sir. Good to say. I'm going crazy. You don't get any argument from me. When we arrived here, there was this guy, and I'm sure I know him. Eric Sutton, pusher, you stay with her. Stay with her. It's a plant. You saw him, it's a plant! You want to take his place? No, of course you don't, so stay where you are, all of you. 
We should have a private little chat. Hang on. Joke box. Play something loud. What do you want, Dor? Information. I'm not big time, I'm you, you know, just a drug run, that's me. Eric Sutton. Look, I've been on his track for months. Yeah, well, after I've used him, you can have him on a murder rap. Murder? Or attempted murder. There's always a catch. Still, attempted murder. I should keep him off the streets for a couple of years. I haven't got much time, Benny. And I haven't got Sutton. Not yet. But I'll find him for you. Cheers. All oh, right. Aren't you forgetting something? Where do you want it? Anywhere it will show. Sorry, Benny. And, uh, thank you. Unfortunately, I haven't been in touch with them for some time. What do the doctors say? Well, if she was a racehorse, she'd be a rank outsider. Bad as that, eh? Bad as that. Mammoth overdose. Has she said anything? No. But she might. She might. She's a pretty girl. ADX. Mind-blowing drug in the coffee. We know why now. The demand arrived on the PM's desk an hour ago. A pay-up or else? I wish it was. No, this is idealism. God save us from all idealists. Thought you and he weren't talking. Oh, he does me the occasional favor. So what do they want? Cease manufacture of chemicals for biological warfare and destroy all stocks. Signed? Not signed. Deadline? No deadline. Yes, a nutty idealist. He'll make his point more than once unless we nail him. Susan? Sue? Stay with her. I'm going to run a check on reservoirs. Reservoirs? Beats coffee vending machines, don't you think? Bretto. Yes, sir. How many men do we have on standby? Thirty, sir. Thirty? Well, we have nine covering the hijacking. I'll have to use outsiders, then. Sir? I'm going to read out a list of reservoirs. What, sir? Reservoirs.
I'm here, Susan. Right here beside you. George. Can't be. He was my cat. White. Persian. Had to have him put down. Well, I'm the next best thing. Not white and fluffy, but plenty of girls think I should be put down. Mm. Uh, don't go to sleep, Susan. Don't go to sleep. Mm. Now, tell me about George. Tell me about him. Oh. Tell me about him. No. He wasn't my fault. Look, you've got to tell me about George. Yes. Shut up! Look, listen, Susan. I want to know about George. Mr. Foley, please. I ran over him in my car. <laughs> Uh, there you go. That's it. Oh, an early bird. Morning. I suppose I'm too early for a sandwich. I'll have to make it myself. It'll take a minute. Oh, that's fine. Cheese or beef? Sorry? Cheese or beef? Beef, please. Thank you. Hello, Betty. Benny called in. He's located supper. Does that make sense? It had better. Where do I meet him? At the Rex Theatre stage door. Repeat, stage door. Right. Yes, right. HQ just got another anonymous phone call. A second demonstration of strength, he said. Where? The Black Bull Marlow. Put out an APB. He said we'd be too late. It's too late to stop it. Let's go. Sorry, I'm time, ladies and gentlemen, please. I said I time, time, gentlemen. Man.
Let's wait a couple of minutes. Why? Afternoon strip show. Curtain down a couple of minutes. Sutton's in there dropping off a little packet of big A's to a good customer. Shall we go in there and nab him? Oh, we'll get him, yeah. But after curtain down. Because after curtain down, that dressing room will be crawling with birds. 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 Yeah. <laughs> birds in a very singular state of disarray. Birds with very few feathers indeed. So wait a couple of minutes. Let's wait a couple of minutes. <laughs> My favourite bus, this. Here end of the second lesson. Plant. You saw him plant that? Yeah, yeah, I yeah, saw it. Yeah, of course you did, of course you did. Yeah, but to keep your supply, you'd vouch for anything, wouldn't you? So, what charge? No charge. And why the cuffs? You look lovely in silver. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, I know the score, so do you. Yeah. No charge, no cuffs, no nothing. Oh, but that's if you're dealing with the police. But he's not from the police. Not police? Then what? CI5. Come on. Hey, Benny. Uh, well, I thought one of us better stay here, you know, sort of case the joint. Yeah. It's my favourite bust. Carly. Forbes here. Did you get his ultimatum? Oh, yes, sir. I have the photostat copy in front of me right now. He's obviously mad. Oh, a crazy man, sir. But, yes, I believe he will do what he threatens to do. And I feel that... I don't care what you feel. Do something about it. Yes, sir. We will try to stop him. And quickly. Sir? Yes? I've got Sutton uh, taking him to interrogation. I'll join you. Well. Ah, oh, we had a cry, a wee sleep. And now it's time we had a little chat. The doctor tells me you're out of the crisis and I can talk to you for a while. Who are you? Well, let's say that I'm the not very bad Samaritan. Oh, you're experts, I can see that. I smell an expert a mile away. <laughs> experts, particularly you. It won't do you any good. You'll get nothing except a countersuit in court. <laughs> I've been worked over by experts before. Took the scalp off my head. Experts from my side of the fence. I think you can succeed where they failed. I think he means it. I think he's got us over a barrel. The last time I was over a barrel, Doyle, I was celebrating New Year, a long time ago. I can still remember that headache very clearly. No one's had me over a barrel since. Sutton's a pusher. Did you ever know a pusher who was a user, Doyle? 
Get me a hypodermic and some heroin. You know Ted Miller and a young girl? Well, she was just 18. Just 18. Do you know that? Hmm? And you, Susan, you nearly died because they wanted you dead. It wasn't my fault. No, I know it wasn't, wasn't your that. fault, darling, but it soon will be if it's allowed to go on. Uh, thousands of people could die, but you could stop that, Susan. But I need names. You hear me, Mr. Sutton? Names. Our names. I don't suppose you fought in the war, Mr. Sutton. No. I fought in several. The worst was against a, a barbaric race. But the British are nothing if not adaptable. We learn barbarism very quickly. We had a problem one day. Was the road ahead mined? We had prisoners, but they wouldn't talk. So we bound them and made them lead the advance. They didn't think we would, not at first. But then the first man ahead was gone. Like that. An anti-personnel mine is a very nasty thing. It was a sudden very nasty. And then the second man. And the third. And then they talked. Then they knew we meant it. A shocking story. It shocked me at the time and it still shocks me, but it was necessary. To save hundreds of lives, it was necessary. I'm willing to be shocked again, if necessary. I'm going to hoist you with your own petard, Mr. Sutton. I'm going to turn you into an addict. <laughs> a crash course in addiction because we have access to the purest stuff. A craving, crawling, do anything for money junkie. Look at me, Sutton. Look at me! And remember the road that was mine. Do you have any doubt at all? that I intend doing what I say. <coughs> Hold up your sleeve. No! No! Oh. Hold it up in there. Hold it. No, it's Nesbitt! It's Charles Nesbitt. Nesbitt? He asked for the keys. I didn't know. Believe me, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, I believe you. But where does Sutton fit in? Oh, when Nesbitt lost his job as a research chemist, uh, Sutton provided him with a means of earning his living. Yes, a market for the hard drugs he could still get hold of. And enough cash to finance his crazy schemes. Nice setup. Eh? Uh, it will be if you don't nail Nesbitt before 5.30. That was the ultimatum to the Prime Minister. A full public renunciation by the government. Cease all research into biological warfare. The announcement may be made by 5.30. Or? Or he attacks a major city with a gallon of ADX. headlines. The government reductions in defence have been agreed by all parties. Mrs. Louisa Freeth has been acquitted of pornography charges at the Old Bailey today. The American president will definitely be visiting this country early next month and hopes to discuss the African problems. In sport, Britain are lagging...
Carly to HQ. Come in, come in. Receiving you, over. APB to all units. Charles Nesbitt driving a bronze Mark III Cortina registration. Registration. HYL 78K. HYL 78K proceeding west along Marlow Road. He's armed. Intercept. Arrest. Fixed. Yeah, it's four o'clock. Look an hour and a half, then. No, less than that. If I'm to advise the PM to make his announcement, beat this madman's terms, and we can't leave it until the last minute. We can't take that chance. An hour at the most, then we have to give him what he wants. And open the floodgates to every nut in the country. Yeah. Where have we seen these before? Susan Fenton. how we met at the World Chemical Sports Club. I don't know who invited him, but anyway, that's where we met. You skied together. But where? Where did you ski? At the club. On the reservoir. Well, let's face it, sir, it's our only shot. No, sir. Haven't seen anybody or anything. Quiet as a grave. Nobody's been out there. Not even near it. Long shot and the wrong shot. The balloon doesn't go up till 5.30, sir. And it's just five now. No, that's long enough. Now, give us a chance to check out the area. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of lives. Here are the news headlines. The government reductions in defence have been agreed by all parties. The American president will definitely be visiting this country early next month. Come on, sir, just a couple of minutes. Just a couple of lousy minutes. Oh, let's go. Hold on! Body! Know something. I don't reckon he was firing at us back there. Couldn't have missed with this thing. What the hell was he firing at? Well, it went past me. 
out across the water. Well, let's get back there and find out. Charles Nesbitt. Well, Mr. Nesbitt, it's all over. All over? It hasn't even begun yet! Bodie! Ski ram, three o'clock from the centre. Got it. That's what he was shooting at. What is it? The ski ram, right of centre, some kind of target. No, it's more than that. You see that wire? Must be linked to something under the water. It's one of the oil drums filled with ADX. Is that it, Nesbitt? It's too late! You're too damn late! I'm betting it's a delayed fuse. Hits the target, sets it off, right, Nesbitt? Give you time to get away. Why don't you find out? Yeah, well, we will. Doyle, you coming? Yeah. Look after these for me, sir. Yeah. We're gonna need a technical advisor, you. Come on. Shall I get him to seal off the reservoir, sir? No time, no use. That thing's going up any minute. Booty! Go ahead! I'm going down! Come back! Cowley to HQ. Come in, Mr. Cowley. Connect me through the hotline. I want to talk to the PM. Right, sir. Prime Minister, number nine, sir. Prime Minister? I'm listening, Cowley. Sir, can you bear with me for 60 seconds? Device, all right. What a lovely thought. You and I got a brain. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't know a thing. Can you see it? I can't see a damn thing. I can feel it though. It's some kind of linkage, and there's a cap. It's stiff. I can just get some purchase on it. Ah, hang about. Oh. Careful. Got it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, turn. I'm turning. Uh, fuck. I think it's moving. No! For God's sake, there's, there's an anti handling device built in. The dummy cap turns clockwise. The real one, underneath, anti-clockwise. Heard what the man said? Anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. There's a trembler! It's a trembler. Trembler. Bodie, don't do that! <laughs> They've done it, sir. Cowley, sir. You won't have to make that announcement after all. Well done. Careful, sir. Not used to such adulation. Nerves, Bodie. Oh, no, the water's damn cold. Uh, we never have scotch or soup with that, right? Uh, medicinal purposes, of course. No, of course. Why did you disobey my orders? I couldn't hear you, sir, the engine. That's right. You heard me perfectly clearly, both of you. In the circumstances, I'm prepared to overlook the matter, but if everybody in CI-5 disobeyed orders, where would it end? 
downfall of the society. <laughs> Possibly. Return to the Dark Ages. Even. Yes, even that. So don't let it happen again. Both of you, mine. <laughs>